The story I'm about to tell you is of one Geometry Dash player who in his time created three levels that were meant to define the future of Geometry Dash. What he didn't know is that one by one his creations would fall until, at the peak of his popularity, the fate of Geometry Dash as a whole would be determined by one single level. It was finally finished. A top player known as Riot would complete the hardest level in Geometry Dash history, Bloodbath. Oh my god! A level where you had to precisely click to jump over obstacles, flip gravity, and fly through extremely tight gaps where if your icon touches a single spike, it could end your run. Every time you die, you have to start back at the beginning of a level. These are not even the most complicated segments of the level. It gets way worse. Damn. The amount of time, dedication, and skill needed to complete a level harder than anything made before is almost incomprehensible. Two weeks after Bloodbath was uploaded on the Geometry Dash servers for anyone to play, Robtop decided to release the long-awaited update 2.0, the largest update the game had ever seen. While GD was receiving more new players and media coverage than ever, most veterans of the game were not able to adapt well at all to the new features. But yeah, 2.0 was just a really strange time for the game and in my opinion it was really weird levels were not that great decoration was pretty strange to discover why 2.0 was so jarring compared to other updates we have to travel back in time Back in 2013 when Geometry Dash started, there was a single button that made it unlike any other game made before. A create button which would lead you to a level editor. In the early era of the game, the level editor would be quite accessible. Most building styles were nice and simple. From 1.1 to 1.9, Robtop was very consistent with updating the game. While there was definitely gradual change and some updates were more ambitious than others, the community never felt overwhelmed. Everything changed when 2.0 was released. The possibilities of the new editor felt intimidatingly endless. Limits of the past like the inability to move objects in the four color limit would be lifted. Many well-established creators were quitting the game, leaving a void that new styles would have to fill. An example of a creator suffering because of the new update was Manix648. <laughs> this was what Manix's levels looked like in 1.9. Quite simple, quite likable. Although in 2.0, his style became an absolute mess. Some creators had better adaptations than Manix. Laser Blitz was pioneering a new technology-based style which thousands would enjoy. Manix would start imitating and making changes to this new tech style. After a while, the two creators became friends and began to regularly collaborate on making the same level. There was no one creating levels quite like they were. The modern Geometry Dash editor was somewhat inaccessible, so when someone was able to figure it out, it could lead to something amazing. Manix would release Fusion. This level was jam-packed with interesting gameplay, never-before-seen effects, and an amazing boss fight. In an era where most boss fights were just some dumb monster that could shoot lasers, Manix making this weird technological masterpiece was insane. Manix would start to be known as one of the greatest Geometry Dash creators of all time. He seemed to be heading straight towards success. Yes! Until suddenly, he would encounter an unexpected detour which would change the fate of Geometry Dash forever. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's over! Get wrecked, sir! Get freaking sir! Out of the millions to download Bloodbath, Quasar was somehow the first to beat it. That serve guy he was talking about was considered to be the best at the time. This is what happened to him. <laughs> yeah, Geometry Dash rivalries are intense. After seeing this, Manix began to think about how far Geometry Dash could be pushed decoration-wise and gameplay-wise. Fueled by ambition, Manix would begin working on a level. And on March 28, 2016, he would release a video titled, Are You Ready to Return? This was Bloodlust, an expectation-shattering recreation of a revolutionary level. Every level needs a verifier. It's pretty much the game's way of saying, you made a level, now you have to prove that it's humanly possible. If you do that, you get to upload the level to the servers for anyone to play. During this time, there were several level projects aiming to rebirth the levels of the past with new features and often far harder gameplay. Compared to Bloodbath, Bloodlust was more difficult. Rather than relying primarily on Strayfly, there was more variety with the game modes. 
There were a ton of decorators, and the general dark atmosphere of the level made it harder to sight read than Bloodbath. Manix was going to top a top 1 level. Bloodbath itself was 1 minute and 50 seconds long. In Bloodlust, you'd think the level would end right here, just like Bloodbath. Although, if you go the normal way, you'll die. You have to jump up here, and then this monster appears, forcing you to play through 50 seconds more of this hell. Along with all of this, Manix would add an incredibly difficult ship part at the start. Although Manix's creations were getting more and more impressive, Quasar was beginning to slow down on Bloodlust progress updates. Theories started to spread that Quasar wasn't capable of verifying Bloodlust and that it would be handed off to someone else. Those rumors are false. I don't know where you heard that. Bloodlust is my challenge, and I have no thoughts of giving up. It wouldn't take very long for Quasar's spirit and determination to be broken by this level. I sometimes twist my fingers whenever I try to play. I can't go 10 minutes on an extreme demon without the pain coming back. I want to apologize to all that I let down, especially Manix. Manix was having a hard time finding someone who even wanted to play Bloodlust. This was until the 10th Bloodbath victor. A player by the name of Nobble Boy told Manix that he was capable of getting the job done. Nobble Boy was a controversial decision because many people thought he wouldn't be good enough. When contending with other top players of the time to see who could be to level first, you'd be hard pressed to find a level where Nobble Boy was even one of the first three victors. Nobble Boy's rivals were already beating new top ones. Bloodbath would finally be replaced by Trusta's Sakup in Hell. Sakup in Hell would be replaced by Athanatos. Athanatos would be replaced by Sunix's Sonic Wave, which would then be replaced by Trusta's Yada Garasu. When the first two verifiers failed and Trusta was selected to be the third verifier of Yada Garasu, he determined the level would be too hard for him to do normally. So he would make it significantly easier than it was originally intended. Therefore, after a week of debate, it was decided that Yadagarasu was easier than Sonic Wave. Nobble Boy's community was widely against the concept of him making Bloodlust easier. They didn't want Bloodlust to be another Yadagarasu, so through the months, Nobble Boy kept putting thousands of attempts into Bloodlust, eventually passing the entire Bloodbath-inspired segment and making it to the extension. During practice runs, Nobble Boy had proven that he was capable of beating the entire extension of Bloodlust. If he could somehow combine those two runs into one amazing attempt and maybe, just maybe, Bloodlust could be a new top one. Eventually, Nobble Boy got a new high score of 76%. After over 100,000 attempts, Nobble Boy was finally ready to finish off what he started. And three days later, Geometry Dash history would be changed forever. No! I can't imagine Bloodlust was fun at all for Nobble Boy after that. Bloodlust had transitioned from a skill-based challenge to a mentality-based challenge, and Nobble Boy was folding under the pressure. Progress on Bloodlust would remain static for months. Around this time, there was another unverified top 1 extreme demon from Manix that was about to turn 1 years old. Let's go back to June of 2016. Many people were eagerly awaiting for more news on Manix's future projects, and they wouldn't have to wait long for previews to a new Top 1 Extreme Demon. Manix would showcase several parts on YouTube. Soon enough, an unfinished copy of the level would be uploaded onto the servers before quickly being deleted. Cyclic was one of the few people to snag a copy. He was a player who had been considered the best of the best in the past, being the first player to ever slay an Extreme Demon. And yet, this level was destroying him. It took him over 1,400 attempts to just beat the level in practice mode. He couldn't even go 1% without dying a ton of times. The comments say it all. I know Manic said Bloodless would be harder, but honestly, I don't believe him. Look at this level. This is absolute insanity. First time I've seen Cyclic struggling like this. This level was Blade of Justice, a collaboration by Manix and Laser Blitz that was far too difficult for anyone to get progress on. The Blade of Justice was about to go on a rampage. Quantum almost instantly quit. Dual Kiki, despite beating Bloodbath five times for fun, did not have the skill to get even close to finishing Blade of Justice once. Trusta, despite making Blade of Justice easier, would be slain by the dull blade. I chose to pass it to Sonix. 
So go support him as much as you can, he is definitely going to need it. Although, there were many issues with Blade of Justice itself. It was unparalleled in its scale, difficulty, and precise decoration. This massive amount of objects made Sunix's computer lag. Sunix theorized that while he could beat parts of the level, a full run of Blade of Justice would be impossible for him to do. After Sunix was slain, Combined would be picked up as the fifth verifier. And after two months of no progress, Combined would be the fifth player to be slain by the blade. Rico LP was playing on Trusta's nerfed copy and now he found himself as the 6th verifier. After Rico LP got a high score, he would take a break, leaving Blade of Justice to die. What I find funny about Geometry Dash is, the more I enjoy a level, the less of a reaction I have when I beat it. Here's Manix verifying some of his easier levels. A toxic mixture of gameplay and decoration generally makes Manix levels unenjoyable to play. When Blade of Justice's sneak peek became 1 years old, Manix told Rico LP to make the level easier and upload it by any means necessary. Soon enough, after over 34,000 attempts. Oh my god. The level would be completed by top player Wushi999 a mere two hours after being uploaded to the servers. Beat it. Are you kidding me? Blade of Justice's release was incredibly disappointing. This level was being hyped up as number one for nearly a year, and what we got was a level that didn't even land in the top 20. Even Bloodbath was still in the top 15. You might be wondering what all of this has to do with the death of Geometry Dash. Well, GD is a very unique game. Most other games rely on updates to keep their community alive. Now updates definitely help, but as they got less and less frequent, the GD community adapted to rely on itself. The popularity of GD is primarily based on what community projects people want to see. Sure, GD has millions of levels, but the number of levels that people actually care about is far less. Every time a project fails, the consequences can be dire. In late 2017, the GD community was starting to die. RobTop's transparency was at an all-time low, and the new update seemed far away. These would be the unfortunate circumstances that would eventually make everything rely on one single player. Novel Boy is an incredibly rare type of player. He's both a good player and a great creator. Levels like Crystal Field, Dark Rainbow Rebirth, and The Furious had this distinct rainbow style which was extremely appealing. Above all of these was Astral Divinity, a level unlike anything the community had ever seen before. It was unheard of for someone this good at creating to be capable of verifying a top one level. While Novel Boy created the end sword and blade of justice, he was about to find himself in the center of another Manix level. This time, creating an entire part for Fusion Z, a level which was the long-awaited end to Manix's Fusion Trilogy. This level was more than 3 minutes long. Players had never seen segments of gameplay or decoration this detailed, although there were cracks forming in the foundation. Fusion Z would remain stagnant as Serve, She Flurry, and Diamond Splash all failed to get real progress. A few months after Blade of Justice's verification, Manix was getting tired of Geometry Dash. After arguably copying too many elements of other levels, the community would make fun of him. His status as a great creator was put in question. Suddenly, Manix would pull the plug on his best looking level yet. Manix was the host of Fusion Z and wanted the level to die. The issue is, Fusion Z was a collaboration. If you spent hours building a part in a level, you'd want that part to be shown to the entire world. You wouldn't want the host saying that suddenly the level shouldn't exist and that it doesn't matter. But at the same time, if you turned around and took the entire level without the host's permission, that'd be quite the interesting move. Despite distancing himself from Bloodlust, Novel Boy had a vested interest in keeping Fusion Z alive, seeing as he and some of his friends had built extremely detailed segments in the level. Major controversy brewed throughout the Geometry Dash community. Many creators who sided with Manix decided to prevent Novel Boy from using their parts. This rebellion of creators would lead to the slow death and fragmentation of Fusion Z, a level which would never be uploaded. So here we are, in 2018. Manix's three top one extreme demons that were meant to define the future all seem to become relics of the past. January 2018 was not a good month for Geometry Dash. While the community had a new preview of the update here and there, it felt like 2.2 should have been out by now. 2.1's release wasn't as much of a popularity peak as 2.0, and the game couldn't keep having these yearly updates. It felt like the Geometry Dash community as a whole was about to enter the Dark Age. I remember being a player back then, kind of bored, nothing to watch, 
nothing to do. Nobble Boy held the keys to the most hyped up level in Geometry Dash history. It felt like a verification of Bloodlust could prolong the Dark Age just a little bit longer. After nearly two years, everyone was tired of waiting. Manix had unintentionally leaked some copies of Bloodlust to other top players, so it was probably inevitable that Bloodlust was about to be stolen. A top player called Redacted started practicing Bloodlust, progressing at a far faster rate than anyone expected. What Redacted did in 8,000 attempts took Nobble Boy over 55,000. Over time, many people began to question whether or not Bloodlust could still stand to the top one demon, which was now Smokes' Plasma Pulse finale. Both levels were very difficult in different ways. It was almost impossible to compare the two. Redacted would continue his stand against Nobble Boy. The two players were surrounded in controversy. Redacted blamed Nobble Boy for not being able to finish Bloodlust, and compared his conquest of Bloodlust to Nobble Boy's attempted takeover of Fusion Z. Even if many people had disapproved with what Redacted was doing, it had been two years since the first Bloodlust preview. Not a lot of people are going to go out of their way to defend something like that. Eventually, Nobble Boy and Redacted would strike a deal. If Redacted would briefly stop practicing Bloodlust, then Nobble Boy would have to return to verify this monstrous creation. After over 1,000 hours of playtime, Nobble Boy would once again find himself in the last 10% of the level. The fate of Geometry Dash as a whole all relied on a few difficult clicks. All of the failures and struggles were worth it. Bloodlust would place number one. Now, despite all of these events, the Geometry Dash community would still enter a dark age. However, even if we couldn't rely on Robtop to give us new content, we could rely on each other. Bloodlust stayed on top of the demon list for over a year and gave the community something to look to for inspiration. Manix would finally release an official version of Fusion Z, a level entirely made in the 1.9 editor. During this time, Nobble Boy released Astral Divinity in Molten Gear, a level which not only revived parts of Fusion Z, but contained new parts which looked amazing. There was also a rebirth known as Edge of Destiny, which would start production. This level perfectly captures the spirit and atmosphere of the unnerfed Blade of Justice. Nowadays, Nobble Boy, Manix, and Laser Blitz don't play GD as much, but they still pop in from time to time to see how the community is doing. 2.2 still isn't out, and GD players have used the same toolset for over 5 years. But none of that matters. Every year the community gets more and more impressive. The passion that millions of people have for this one simple mobile game never ceases to amaze me. This game isn't just a platformer with a level editor. It's a creative outlet, a way to triumph over seemingly impossible circumstances, and a world where thousands of unique and interesting adventures are being started every day. There's never been a better time to play Geometry Dash, so why not join now and start your unforgettable journey today? Space lock 2. <laughs>